Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Prithvi Raj Bandaru. Uh, welcome to the show. You know, this past week, I've been having a good week. I just finished my junior year of college. Yeah, it's huge. Um, I only have one more year, and that I guess that technically means that this is my second to last summer break before, before the big one that lasts the rest of my life. <laughs> you know anyway what else now that school is over uh i get to spend more time thinking learning and reading about good news and that's what this podcast is about um i'm here to find some of the best good news uh and make your day better uh because we might as well be the bright spot in your day why not right um so thanks for listening junior year uh is over and i'm ready for summer so um, so junior year over show starting, you know, today we're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to talk about Mother's Day, especially. So happy Mother's Day. Um, we're going to talk about some incredible, inspiring bonds between, um, some children and their mothers. And then we're going to talk about some influential mothers, um, like the first lady and the vice president. Uh, and then to wrap it up, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to tell you some of the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mom on Mother's Day. Um, so jumping right into it, um, we've, we've got the story of a son who makes his mom's bucket list journey into a documentary. Um, what, a, what a cool thing to do for your mom. So this journey kind of began in 2016 after this mother left a voicemail for her son. That voicemail was simple. All it said was, I just got fired. Just want you to know that. Call me. Bye. Classic mom, classic mom lingo, you know. Nice and cryptic, but also simple at the same time. Something only moms can really accomplish. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is actually pretty tragic because this mom had been fired at 75 years old. You know, you never kind of expect that to happen to you when you're that old. Um, and that's kind of why her son, who is also a freelance journalist, took a different tack and a different uh, perspective towards this. Um, he said she worked her hands to the bone. Uh, and she deserved to feel a joy, and that's what I wanted to give her. And it, I think that's what we all kind of want to give her moms day in and day out, and especially on Mother's Day. Um, so what this mother and the son duo did, they um, they hit the road, and they started checking items off of her bucket list. You know, it was simple stuff like she wanted to milk a cow in Vermont, specifically in Vermont. Done. They did that. You know, she wanted to take a hip-hop lesson, you know, before her hip pops. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, you know, they did that and she wanted to learn how to use Instagram, which I think more mothers should add to their bucket list, how to use Instagram, how to use technology in general, Instagram specifically. Um, and you know, and, uh, learning how to use Instagram, I think even for this mom is still a work in progress apparently. So they still have to check that one off. Um, and so her son, Regis, he chronicled their adventure in a new documentary, and he titled it Duty Free. And you can actually watch it right now, and the, sh- the film is showing across the countries, and it's kind of like a gift to her. So honestly, this is kind of like your reminder that <laughs> Mother's Day is coming up, uh, and you should probably do a little more for your mom than make a phone call. If a phone call is all you can do, um, that's understandable. And if you can't make a documentary about your mom living her life goals... I guess that's also understandable. Um, and, you know, I, th- I think what I take away from this story is the, the beauty of spending time with your mom. You know, because uh, 
that that really defines the relationship between a mom uh, and her siblings, you know, because all throughout their life, they're kind of devoting time to you. And uh, it, it feels like the least that we can do in return is give some of that time back. And her son uh, really wanted to kind of make a statement on the the state of ageism that exists within America specifically. He says that, um, you know, a, a lot of uh, the job application process that older people have to go through doesn't seem geared towards them. You know, it, do it doesn't seem like we have a market that's geared towards old people. And I guess that's because when we think about um, the job market, we're thinking about young people who are generally first breaking into it or are currently looking for jobs because a lot of people associate getting older with stability, but that's not always the case. And, you know, some of these job applications are electronic only. You have to do it through specific apps. And some of these uh, elderly people who really need the job, uh, like the mother in this story, don't really have the, the means to apply for them. Uh, and so her son wanted to not only document the beauty of his mom uh, taking what was originally a, a, a pretty bad deal of the cards and turning it into something beautiful, an opportunity to take life back when it seems like life had pushed you down. Um, and th that, that wouldn't be possible without the support of her son and the, her son pouring his time into his mom and also making this social statement. Um, because I think what mothers want more than anything is um, for the people that they raise to have an impact on the world. Um, and so her son kind of grouped those two things together in this documentary, Duty Free, um, where he pays thanks to his mom and he also, he, he also makes an impact and a difference in the world. And while the, the bucket list items themselves seem simplistic in nature, um, I, I think they give a really beautiful message. You know, just milk a cow in Vermont, take a hip-hop lesson. It's just wanting to experience life. Uh, and, it, uh, and it's a pure form of experiencing it, too. You're doing it with your son. You're doing it with someone that you've raised your whole life. And it's, uh, it's beautiful. You know, this, this, this film, it took four years uh, it, to complete the, this bucket list, to, to produce, to edit. You know, all that took four years. And they compressed it into just about 70 minutes. Um, and really the, the takeaway they want you to take away from this is just how filling, how fulfilling spending more time with your parents can be. Um, because I'm sure we all spend time with our parents. Um, but how much of that time is quality time, you know, uh, diving into the person that they are at their core, because we know them as a, as a mother, we know them as, you know, a wife, but, um, eventually that that identity overtakes them and and i think it's time to take mother's day a day that's devoted to that identity um i think it's our job to go below the surface and you know re really find out who is my mom and how can i make her happy and finding ways to make your mother's hap to make your mother happy is a huge part of mother's day and it is essentially the focus um and some people will make a movie. Some people will make breakfast in bed. Uh, and some people will climb a mountain with their mom. Uh, so this this mother and this daughter, Valerie and Jess Waddell. Valerie is the mother, and she's 61, and she has asthma. Then there's the daughter, Jess. Um, and she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer four, or five years ago in 2016. Um, and she's had multiple surgeries and months of chemotherapy, but she's now cancer-free. So congratulations to Jess. Um, but an even bigger congratulations because right after beating cancer, her and her mother went and climbed Mount Everest. Uh, the the two, uh, the mother and the daughter, they were, were they were going against winds that were sixty miles an hour, and you know they, they were facing a whiteout conditions for about forty three hours straight. Whiteout conditions. Um, I actually had never even heard the term whiteout conditions. <laughs> until this that's how that that is that that's incredible to me with 60 mile per hour winds um and uh valerie and jess waddell are actually um going going to become the first 
American mother and daughter team to reach the world's highest peak, Mount Everest. Um, and that's pretty incredible. And actually, uh, this mother and daughter duo have been climbing. Um, and at first, the daughter was scared. The, uh, the mother always kind of had a passion for climbing and thrill-seeking. Um, the, the first taste she ever got of thrill-seeking uh, was actually when she met her husband, and they were scuba diving. Uh, she was scuba diving for the first time, and she was like, wow, uh, this is incredible. And eventually, she found out that she loves hiking mountains even more. So she's been hiking her whole life. Um, but when her daughter, Jess, um, got diagnosed with ovarian cancer, that all kind of took a halt. Um, and, all, and all of the energy kind of went to healing Jess. And once that was accomplished, um, the two decided to go together. But really, the daughter, Jess, she... She was like most of us. She was afraid to climb a mountain. She was afraid. She was afraid to go against sixty mile per hour winds and whiteout conditions for forty three hours, much like most of us. Um, but uh, what really convinced her was this perspective that life had given them a second chance. Um, but a second chance for what? A second chance to embrace life. You know, to go big and try the unexpected things in life. Um, and the belief that not only because Jess beat cancer, but also because um, all of Valerie and her husband Greg's daughters beat cancer. They all had it and they all beat it. Um, and like I said, the daughter Jess really hated climbing when she first started. Um, she was scared of the heights and uh, she was afraid of the dangers. Um, <laughs> and they, they, they told a story about how... Um, when they first started climbing, the whole time, the daughter Jess was just being incredibly vocal about how much she hated this experience. Um, and eventually, you know, Jess became less fearful. Um, and I think that's because once we know something, we become less afraid of it. Once we know the ins and outs of how something works and what it is, um, the fear kind of dissipates. And... Not to say that mothers are to be feared, but mothers hold a uh, a position of power in a lot of people's lives. And, you know, that position of power often puts distance between the mother and the child. But getting to know your mom and what makes her tick and the fact that she loves to climb mountains, and you're like, why? I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't like climbing mountains. And then you do it. You do it enough times and you understand it. Um, and so I think, I think that perfectly correlates to a relationship with a mother because um, they're not always perfect. But they require work. And um, that work can, I think, lead to something beautiful. Like the first mother and daughter American duo to reach the world's highest peak. But that doesn't come without challenges. Like I said, Jess didn't like it at all. Um, and th those, those challenges come with uh, taking down walls, taking down barriers, uh, and doing things that you wouldn't normally do uh, because that's where the growth comes from. Uh, Jess said that her mom had never really heard her swear before, but uh, when she was going up those mountains, she she was cussing, and her... I. I I guess that was a way that her and her mom got closer. Um, not saying that that's what Mother's Day is for. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, she is your mom and she has known you her whole life. Uh, your whole life, rather. So an interesting thing about the way these, uh, these hikes up these giant mountains like Mount Everest are, um, you go in three periods. So uh, you, you go to a certain elevation on your first trip. Uh, so that your body can get used to being at that elevation, and then you come back down. Uh, and then you go on a second trip, you go a little higher, then you come back down so your body can get used to it. And I think on that third trip is where uh, you finally reach the peak. So it's a grueling process, um, and, it, and it's one that requires, if you're going to do it with someone, it's, it's one that requires trust and closeness and togetherness. Uh, and all, for, for this mother and daughter, that came with time. That came with spending time with each other. Um, 
and and realizing that life is that life is precious and uh who better to thank for that than the one who gave you life so we have a lot to learn from this mother and daughter from oklahoma that's right oklahoma uh not home to many mountains but home to some uh inspiring individuals uh to to go from a place that doesn't really have scuba diving or mountains or anything like that uh to to actively seeking out those opportunities is something inspiring and it's something that I think uh, wouldn't be possible without the support that um this mother and daughter give each other so we're going to take a little break uh but right after this break we've got some stories of some inspiring mothers uh, who are currently taking action in society to make it a better place, as if they already haven't done enough. We've got uh, mothers like First Lady Jill Biden uh, and Vice President Kamala Harris. We've also got former First Lady Michelle Obama. All of these are people who are doing things in society and actively trying to better it um, be using their positions. Uh, so stick around and... Uh, you're going to hear more about these stories and more about these mothers for Mother's Day. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere where you find podcasts just type gsmc in the search bar Welcome to the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Prithviraj Bandaru, and uh, in this last segment, we just talked about some inspiring stories between some mothers and their children. Uh, And if you stick around till the end, you're going to get to hear the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mother on Mother's Day. Uh, But right now, we're going to talk about some inspiring mothers. Uh, For example... Uh, Jill Biden, you know, uh, with families around the country, you know, we're all preparing to celebrate Mother's Day. Um, You know, Jill Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, they're putting a new national spotlight on less traditional types of motherhood. You know, gone are the days where a typical nuclear family is dominating, is is 90 percent of the families in America. Those days aren't really here anymore. You know, we, we've got some more modern families and we've got some more uh, less traditional families. And, and, I th- and we're, we're starting to see some of that representation, uh, even at the highest level in politics. Uh, you know, so the two most high profile women in the Biden, is Biden administration, Jill Biden and Kamala Harris, um, they both kind of came to motherhood in different ways, but uh, they share one common thread. And and this is what I'm talking about that that unconventional uh, sort of parenting role becoming more normal. Both of them stepped into their roles as stepmothers, uh, and as Biden and Harris have settled into their new prominent roles, uh, they kind of sought to highlight the issues that mothers face, and uh, they wanted to do something especially for the COVID nineteen pandemic. You know, um, <laughs> some say that mothers have had it the hardest. During the pandemic, you know, uh, constantly constantly staying at home, Uh, you know, but the thing is that neither of these mothers, Jill Biden and Kamala Harris, neither of them went by the title of stepmother. Um, Their paths to motherhood reflected a shifting of the, you know, the shifting of that, what I was talking about, that typical nuclear family. Um, And according to a 2011 Pew Research study, uh, 42% of American adults have a step relative. Uh, whether that's a step parent, uh, a step or a half sibling or a stepchild, that's forty-two percent. Uh, 
that's starting to reflect a new normal in America, and that's being reflected uh, by these mothers. So uh, let me tell you about the the path that um, uh, Jill Biden went down. So when she was 26, uh, she was Jill Jacobs, you know, and she became uh, more than just a senator, senator's wife when she married Joe Biden. Uh, and she also became a parent to his sons at the time, Bo and Hunter, um, who – his biological mother was Niala, um, but she was killed in a car accident along with their sister. And so stepping into the role of mom uh, for Jill Biden to two young boys came with some challenges, you know, and some learning curves. Uh, the amount of laundry that that family was generating, I can't imagine, um, you know, and they learned how to do the quick meals. They learned how to do the multitasking. And uh, Jill Biden is an educator. Uh, she's a professor. You know, and so it, it is a kind of typical reflection of a family where both the mom and the dad are working, you know, and uh, both the mom and the dad, uh, one of those could be a step member. So this is kind of a reflection of the families that we, have, we as Americans have come to know. Um, and Vice President Kamala Harris, she had a similar story, but it was still different. Um, she, was, she, she used her own mother as a deep influence of hers. Um, Kamala Harris was a child of divorce, and the vice president, um, she hasn't been shy about crediting her mother uh, that for instilling her with the values and the lessons uh, that got her to where she is today. She really attributes a lot of it to her mom, uh, and it's clear to see why. Um, and it's clear to see the manifestation of that, too, because um, Harris's own road to motherhood, that began when she started dating her now husband, uh, Cycle second gentleman, uh, Doug Emhoff, and he had two children, and they were both teenagers uh, when they began dating. Um, two teenagers. I can't. <laughs> I uh, as far as I know, teenagers are the hardest people to impress um, because they can identify the thing that you hate most about yourself, as many know about teenagers. Um, but both the first lady and the vice president. They took on their new roles uh, in January, and they not only publicly embraced their own roles as mothers, um, but they also kind of sought to highlight the issues impacting a lot of mothers of all kinds in the United States, particularly, like I said before, the coronavirus pandemic. And that led to millions of women, many of mothers, withdrawing from the workforce. And as we were discussing before, the workforce is a huge part of families nowadays, um, because both parents, uh, you know, and sometimes even uh, kids, once they're able to, are joining the workforce, uh, whether that's to keep busy, whether that's to support their family. Regardless, um, a lot of a lot of uh, the dynamic of a family revolves around people staying busy. You know, and this is inspiring in its own way because um, Dr. Jill... Biden and Kamala Harris, they both kind of said that um, being a stepmother kind of represented a second chance for them in a lot of ways. And it shows that just because you need a second chance and you're taking a second chance, um, it proves that that non-traditional family can often be the route to success for a lot of people. Um, and developing that, you know, feeling of inclusion for, for stepmothers. Um, I, uh, Jill Biden was talking about how she kind of she, she never really went by the title of stepmom and rather she was um, a mom and the deceased Nyala would be known as mommy um, because that's what they they knew Nyala as and they knew um, Jill Biden as mom and kind of having that respect and that boundary within a family um it makes it easier to transition um, because uh, when, when you're able to respect the past and also move on, um, uh, th that's when you start to see success. And I, and I think that's what um, Dr. Jill Biden and Kamala Harris were discussing, uh, saying that, you know, you have to embrace your past in order to move on. And uh, so the, these mothers who have rose in ranks and, um, have power, you know, I, who else to trust other than moms, right? Next, we've got a story um, of Michelle Obama. You know, she, um, 
She recently had a seminar with Girl Scouts where they launched a program based on um, their best-selling novel, uh, Memoir. It was titled Memoir. So former, former First Lady Michelle Obama is encouraging young girls to reflect on their own personal stories as they work on becoming their best selves. So she's kind of serving as a role model um, in, in, the Girl Stout, in, in the Girl Scouts. And I, I think that's a wise move because these are, these are people that, have, that, are, that are developing their skills or trying to develop their leadership and hone their skills. Um, and have, having a presence like Michelle Obama can really elevate that experience for them because um, not only does it give them a source of representation, uh, but it also gives them someone with experience and credibility that can be like, hey, be yourself, embrace who you are. Um, so Michelle Obama, she's partnering with the Girl Scouts of the USA on the Becoming Me program. And that's based on a, a young reader edition of her best-selling memoir, Becoming. Uh, and so that that's Michelle Obama's me- memoir, Becoming. Um, and... Uh, so they're kicking off this program, which um, launched pretty recently. And Obama, who's a mother of two herself, to Sasha and Malia, um, she talked for about one hour with just five girls um, from the Girl Scouts. And these girls were from all over the country, and there were all sorts of ages. Um, and to be able to connect with them on that level, I think, is very special for those five individuals. Um, and so uh, she she writes in her memoir uh, – about her journey from growing up on the south side of Chicago to becoming a lawyer, a wife, and a mom, and then eventually the first lady of the United States. Um, And she's kind of telling these girls that no matter what, no matter what you're doing, uh, where you are in life, there's a path ahead of you. You just have to find it. Um, She, uh, In her memoir, a a big tone is... uh, going against the odds and, and, and doing what you need to do and being smart about it. And so one of these uh, Girl Scouts that was on this one-hour call with her, Isabel Montalavo, she's 16. She's a high school junior from Puerto Rico. Um, and she asked Michelle Obama about her, which, her, her catchphrase, which is now famous. Uh, she said, when they go low, we go high. And she said this during the 2016 DNC, uh, during Hillary Clinton's run for president. Um, and uh, what this means is that, um, going high when they go low, going high means looking at the bigger picture, uh, because when you go low, you're sometimes just reacting to your base, you know, it's, it's just your gut reaction. Um, that, that's what it means to go low. And when you're going high, I guess, I guess you're zooming out, you're looking at the bigger picture. Um, and I think that's what Michelle Obama is trying to tell them, you know, she grew up on the south side of Chicago. She had a whole life. Um, but being able to zoom out, I think, gives them a type of perspective that, yeah, if they're patient, they they can do what they need to do. Um, and so the former first lady, she released her young reader edition of Becoming in March, and she even adapted um, a version for kids uh, ages 10 and older, and the book features a special introduction by M- uh, Michelle Obama herself, and it even has some pictures in it. In her speech, uh, Michelle Obama said that she had been to, she, she had worked at law firms, she had worked at the state level with governors and mayors, uh, she had worked at the head of nonprofits, you know, she's gone to the G summits, she's been to the places of the places, she's been in the room where it happens, and she told these girls that. You know, I've been to every table you can imagine, and you are definitely smart enough to be there. Uh, and I'll believe her. Uh, you know, and just a, as a little refresher before we head into the break, I've got a story about an orphaned polar bear that uh, she used to love to hug Arctic workers. Um, and now this orphaned polar bear has a chance at a new life. Um, so when these Arctic gold miners, uh, they discovered this lost and helpless bear cub. It was a polar bear. Um, and apparently her, her mother had died. Um, and, you know, I'm sure they reacted the same way that we would react when we see a helpless polar bear. Their hearts melted, you know. And as the orphan cub grew to trust them, uh, they they eventually felt like a, felt like a friend and... 
when the workers were going to move remote, uh, they decided that they needed to provide this bear with a home. Um, and so the crew scheduled to leave the base when the work contract came to an end where they were working. Um, in which case the bear would have, would be left to fend for itself. Um, and they were thinking about, okay, let's just leave enough food here for her to last. But um, it eventually, that bear eventually would have been picked off by predators. Um, and so they eventually founded a new home in Russia. And so that bear is currently living happily in Russia. Um, and so, you know, th- there's, there's some bear cubs who don't have moms on this Mother's Day. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying that we should send them to Russia, but I am saying that um you know we should we should show them an extra little love today uh you know give give them a bear hug uh leave some extra food for them uh don't let them don't let them get it picked off by a predator all right so we're gonna head to the break but when we come back from the break we're gonna be talking about how empathy training for parole officers has led to a 13 percent decrease in offenders returning to jail um And so we're going to learn about what empathy training is and uh, what kind of effects this is going to have going forward in the criminal justice system. Uh, And then we're also going to talk about a teacher who is building thousands of desks um, after seeing that a lot of the kids, uh, when they were doing remote learning, they didn't have workspaces at home. So he took it upon himself to uh, show or to make to make these desks for these kids. Um, and if you stay around till the end, you're going to get to hear about the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mom on Mother's Day. That's going to be a countdown, um, and we're going to go about one way to say thank you a minute. So stick around, and you're going to get to hear all about the empathy training in police officers. You're going to get to hear about a teacher who's building desks for students And we're going to circle back to Mother's Day, and I'm going to tell you the top 15 ways to thank your mom on Mother's Day. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Back from the break, welcome to the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Prithvi Raj Bandaru. All right, so um, right before we left for the break, we were talking about um, some stories of some influential mothers, uh, you know, the likes of Dr. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Michelle Obama, and then we also talked about um, a friendly little polar bear who eventually found a home in Russia. Um, but now we're going to be talking about how empathy training for parole officers has led to a 13% drop in offenders returning to jail. Uh, So incarceration is a major problem in the United States, and it's one that is really costly to families, communities, and society at large. Um, And so the the authors of the study really wanted to investigate whether the path from prison, uh, whether the path from prison may lead back to prison, regardless of, um, how how these convicts are acting once they once they leave prison and and so they wanted to see whether this uh, this was because of their relationship with 
parolees and their probation officer, their parole officer. Um, and so we've got heavy caseloads, job stress and biases that are all kind of negatively affecting the relations between officers and their clients. Um, so all of this stress, all of the stuff that they're doing in and outside of the job are likely leading to offenders landing back behind bars because the way it works is um, when you're on parole and when you're on probation, it's your parole officer that you have to please and it's your parole officer that's um, that's really going to determine whether or not you're going to go back to jail. Um, and so a positive psychology intervention uh, developed by UC Berkeley uh, suggests that non-judgmental empathy training helps court-appointed supervision officers, um, and it helps them feel more emotionally connected to their clients. Uh, and a new study shows that it might even deter this criminal from backsliding into prison. Uh, and so this 13% decrease in offenders returning to jail is among the clients of parole and probation officers who, partic who participated in this empathy training experiment. Um, so let me tell you about this study. So it's a 30-minute empathy exercise, essentially, that these parole officers are doing. It just takes 30 minutes. Um, and this 30 minutes led to a 13% decrease in the parolees um, coming back into prison 10 months later. Um, so the study's participants were 216 probation or parole officers. Um, and together, they were responsible for overseeing more than 20 thousand adults on probation or parole 216 responsible responsible for 20,000 uh so the these participants they were randomly assigned to take part in one of two interventions and so one of the interventions was the empathetic supervision intervention um and the way that that works is that they asked officers to respond to questions such as why is it important for parolees and probationers to feel valued and respected. And they would ask questions like this. And they were hoping to invoke um, these feelings of empathy and these feelings of viewing these uh, past convicts, these parolees as humans, um, rather than less than, rather, rather than s more paperwork. They're trying to get them to see past the paperwork, see them as humans. Um, and uh, the other was a control, or it was a placebo intervention. Um, instead of focusing on empathy, it focused more on how officers can use technology to get better organized. And so this one was kind of to just uh, be a placebo and throw them off. And then they also asked uh, these parolees to write a letter to a future officer in training. Uh, and in this letter, they offered tips on how to avoid the job becoming too impersonal. And how to remember the humanity in their work. Because I think a huge concern um, for this job specifically is that the work can become personal. You can get invested in these people and you can get invested in their lives. And that could prevent you from doing your job correctly. However, oftentimes it goes too far in the wrong direction. It becomes incredibly impersonal. So within these letters they were telling them how to keep the job from becoming that way and how to remember the humanity in the work, uh, how to remember that they're really, they really are trying to do good. They really are trying to keep these people out of jail, but make sure that they're on the right track once they've um, escaped or not escaped, but been released from jail. You know, this actually turned out to be a very important study. Um, because the U.S. criminal justice system has among the highest rates of offenders returning to jail after leaving. Um, and that's, that's with approximately 66% of incarcerated people rearrested within three years of their release. Um, and one half of this 66% is being sent back behind bars. Um, and so it's, it, it's, it's kind of rough, you know. And it's the job of these parole officers and probation officers to make sure that their clients don't miss drug tests or court hearings. And they're providing them with resources to help them stay out of trouble and, and out of jail. And so 
when when someone in that position has empathy for their client rather than seeing them as a client rather than seeing them as a piece of paper they're like oh let me know you as a human and let me help you let, let me show you the humanity um let me provide you with these resources you know let me let me let me remind you of your drug test let me remind you that you have a court hearing coming up um and so this is this is really important work um, that's happening, and, and it's uh, yielding positive results already. You know, um, the director of this program, he said that the relationship between probation and parole officers and the people they supervise plays a pivotal role and can lead to positive outcomes if efforts to be more understanding are taken into consideration. It's that understanding that's the most key aspect. Um, and when it comes to understanding, uh, the this teacher, uh, his name is Nate Evans. Um, he's a teacher and he's building thousands of desks after seeing on Zoom and in class that a lot of his students didn't have workspaces. Um, he launched this project called Woodworking with a Purpose. Um, he's a seventh grade literacy, literacy teacher um, and he and 50 plus volunteers have built roughly... 600 desks for kids after this teacher noticed that some of his kids were, like I said, logging into virtual classes while sitting at the kitchen table. So many things going on around them or uh, in their beds, you know, and he says that it's for kids that have absolutely nothing. Um, And it's also for the kids who have everything they've wanted, but don't necessarily have a space uh, dedicated to school because it isn't available. Um, he said somebody had to provide it, and he thought, why not me? Um, and I think that's how a lot of influential ideas start. You think, why not? Why can't I do this? Um, and so Evans, he first, um, uh, Nate Evans, he first paid for the supplies to build desks. Um, he first was paying out of pocket. Uh, but after he started posting this idea on Facebook, um, with without the intent of being like, oh, hey, can you help me? Um, he he started getting donations, and they started flooding in. People were really buying into what he was doing for these kids. Um, so Evans and his team, uh, they have a goal to make 2,020 desks representing the year 2020 by the end of this school year. Um, and so they're currently trying to raise an additional $30,000 for materials. Um, $30,000, and that comes because each desk costs roughly $20 to $25 to make. Um, and he's just building it inside of his storage unit or his garage. So this $30,000 is really going to these $20 to $25 desks that he's making for his students. Um, uh, and then, so how do these students get them? So local educators later come and pick them up and distribute to students them, uh, distribute them to students in the area. Um, so when we're able to empathize, regardless of power dynamic, whatever, when we're able to empathize, we're really able to do some good in the community. Um, much much like these probation officers, much like this teacher, um, they were able to see past the paperwork and they were able to see who these people are and what they need and they help them uh nate evans he, he's a seventh grade literacy teacher he, he he was just an english teacher and he noticed hey let me let me help these kids because i have the capability and i and i can do it so why can't so so i, I might as well all right and lastly i want to tell you guys about this no fly travel agency that's essentially encouraging you to slow down and take the scenic scenic route um so the founder of um so the 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 founder of this company byways uh it hopes to capitalize on the rising demand for flight free holidays and also to promote the virtues of slow travel you know um so these travel agents uh they were struggling before the pandemic as it was um, and then after the and then during the pandemic, obviously, travel agencies took a hit. Um, and so uh, one of the founders, he decided to reboot the concept of a travel agency. 
And the idea was to change how we travel while making the sector more sustainable even after COVID. Um, and the result of that was Byway, which offers tailored and um, off-the-peg itineraries that are flight-free. So essentially that means that uh, you're taking a train, you're going slower, you're uh, taking in some views, and you're uh, looking at the beautiful um, parts of your journey. And so uh, part of their slogan is that we stand by the principle that traveling through the world is better than flying over it, where you don't really see as much. And he, uh, he likes the appeal of romanticism and the joy in journeys that go through it. Um, and he, he's also trying to revive a bygone way of seeing the world. Um, and in this way, one of the founders, he hopes to capitalize on the modern movement to reduce flying in order to save the planet. Because honestly, um, flying is a huge pollutant to the environment. Um, with jet fuels, and uh, he's hoping that these, uh, especially newer trains, are much more sustainable, um, and it's a much more sustainable alternative to flying. Um, and so, yeah, so most people that are booking through this site already, um, they have sustainable motivation. That's the, that's one of the biggest motivators for booking through this um, company, Byway, and they kind of just want to go on an overland holiday, and for and they want someone else to book it for them. It's that whole travel agency idea. Um, and so part of the appeal of this is that the journey is part of the vacation. Um, they always say that the journey is more important than the destination. In this case, the journey is part of it. Um, you're, you're, and you're looking forward to, to seeing the views. You're looking forward to riding on a train. Uh, and best of all, you're doing it while helping the planet. Um, what more can you ask for? Because I think for most people, uh, it's, all right, how do we get have our trip be the shortest so that we can enjoy our destination the longest? Um, and this is kind of reworking our perception of what is the destination. Um, so slowing down and taking that scenic route, um, I think, is a really beautiful way of traveling and um, it removes the stress of airports and flying, um, and it also removes that those carbon emissions that are slowly um, eating away at the environment. Um, so we're gonna head a, we're gonna head out for a break, but when you come back, we're finally gonna get to the top fifteen ways to say thanks to your mother on Mother's Day. Um, so thanks for listening to our couple stories about um, empathy training in parole officers leading to that 13% drop-off in offenders returning to jail. We also talked about how um, our teacher, Nate Evans, a 7th grade literacy teacher, is um, building thousands of desks um, after seeing that a lot of the kids on Zoom and uh, online classes don't necessarily have a great workspace. And then we just finished talking about... Um, uh, the no fly travel agency that is encouraging people to slow down and take the scenic, scenic route. So when we get back, we're going to have the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mother on mother's day. Um, uh, we'll be right back after this break. Thanks. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info.
And welcome back to the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast. It's still me, Prithvi Raj Bandaru, and I'm going to tell you the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mother on Mother's Day. Um, and if you're just joining us, we just finished talking about um, how there was um, empathy training in parole officers led to a 13% decrease in offenders returning. We talked about how a teacher built desks for students who don't have a great workspace at home. And we talked about um, a new way to travel that encourages you to slow down and take the scenic route. Um, But uh, now we're ready for the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mother on Mother's Day. And the number one or number one on the list is flowers. What mother doesn't love flowers? Um, Flowers are a great way to show your mom, hey, I thought of you and more than anything, you know, I spent a little money on you. Uh, nothing crazy and low commitment. Flowers go away in a couple of days and they look beautiful and smell beautiful while they're here. Um, second off on this list, we've got a card. Cards are great. Um, my mom is a crier and I could write anything in a card and I know she would cry. Um. And so cards are a surefire way to at least get your mom to um, read something, open something for Mother's Day. Um, So if you can't do anything, uh, you don't even have to go out and buy a card. You can make a card for your mom uh, and let her know that you appreciate her. Number three on this list is an apron. Get your mom an apron. I'm not talking about one of those aprons that you wear in the kitchen I'm talking about those aprons that, like, that waitresses wear, you know? <laughs> those, are those, uh, those are those aprons that have, like, everything in them. You need a straw, here's a straw. You need me to write something down, let me write something down. You need a to-go box, I got a to-go box. Okay, that last one doesn't really apply to the mom thing. But I think they should have one of those aprons that just have a crazy amount of pockets where you can fit the whole entire world inside of it. Um, so get your mom an apron, number three. That was number three um, for Mother's Day. Number five, or number four is a five-pound weight, a set of five-pound weights. For some reason, um, every mother ever in the existence of the world has a set of five-pound weights that, uh, that encompasses their whole entire workout routine. They, uh, they'll walk with them. They'll cook with five pound weights attached to their wrists. They can't get enough of these five pound weights. Um, every mother I've ever known will not just walk. They will hold five pound weights in their hands and walk because it's more efficient. And what are moms, if not efficient and thinking ahead? <clears throat> uh, number five on the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mom on mother's day is breakfast in bed. Um, sure. She, after she eats breakfast, she's going to have to clean the kitchen, but It's at least nice to know that she can eat in bed and she's going to have to, yeah, she's going to have to hold her hand under her mouth as she bites into the toast because she doesn't want crumbs to fall into the bed, which she knows is going to happen eventually. But she's not going to say no. (laughs) You can bring her breakfast in bed. She's not going to say no. Um, But also let her sleep in. Don't don't make tea at 6 in the morning and be like, hey, mom, I brought you tea, but I didn't want it to get cold. Just uh, wait till like 8, 8.30, wait till 9, wait till 11. Whenever she wakes up, then make the tea. Then make her the breakfast in bed. Um, and if you can, clean the kitchen. If not, mom will do it, right? Um, number six on the list of the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mom on Mother's Day is an extra pair of sunglasses. Um, and these aren't for the eyes in the front of her head. These are sunglasses for the eyes in the back of her head. Um, because as we know... Once you become a mom, you get eyes in the back of your head. It's just a, we all know it. You have eyes in the back of your head, but nobody ever thinks to protect them. Yeah, sure, you can do the backwards visor, um, but get your mom some an extra pair of sunglasses and let her know that it's for the ones in the back of your head that are always watching you. Um, some yeah, somehow every single mom I've ever known, really, I think I think I think though they're like heat detecting eyes, but they only detect like your child. Um, that's the only explanation I could really have. Uh, number seven 
on the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mother on Mother's Day is a massage. Um, I'm 21, and I am incredibly stressed. And I hold that all of that stress within my body. Um, <laughs> I am always tense. I am always um, in need of a massage. And I can't imagine the type of stress that a mom is under. I don't even have to take care of anyone else besides myself, and I can barely do that. <laughs> so I can I can imagine how much every mom ever needs a massage. Um, so give your mom a massage yourself, arrange a massage for your mom, but either way, um, help her get rid of that stress for Mother's Day. Um, number eight is some headphones. Get your mom some headphones. Um, let her escape for a little bit. <laughs> how about um because when she uh she she doesn't even actually have to play anything in those headphones but if someone's ever trying to talk to him be like hey mom where's the uh it, she could just be sorry i'm i'm listening to something can you like hold on a second sure yeah i got your headphones i can i can hold on for a second um and also she can take calls on those headphones she doesn't necessarily have to uh we all know how secretive moms are. She can take calls on those headphones, and nobody else will be able to hear a conversation. Um, number nine on the list of the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mom on Mother's Day is candles. Uh, candles are calming. Um, candles burn beautifully. Uh, and uh, moms do a lot of cooking a lot of the times, and uh, candles help get that, get that smell out of the house. <clears throat> I remember I uh, I got my mom candles, and uh, she ended up giving it back to me because she said that my room smelled bad. Um, so what's the, what's a mom if not allocate, allocating resources efficiently, getting rid of problems? Um, so get your mom a candle, and you might have a better smelling room. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, number ten on the list of the top fifteen things to uh, on. Top 15 ways to say thanks to your mom on Mother's Day. Write a song. I kid you not, a couple of years ago, um, I, I woke up and my sister was like, hey, it's Mother's Day. And I was like, you're kidding. And she was like, no, it's Mother's Day. And she showed me how she had she had a card. She had flowers. Um, she had all this stuff already planned. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't have anything. I don't have anything for Mother's Day. Um, and so I had a piano in my room. So so. I found four chords and I wrote rap. I was just like, shout out to you for, cause you're the best mom. Can't take you on a plane because you're the bomb. It was something stupid like that. <laughs> but, um, my mom loved it. She, um, she video recorded it. She sent it to all of her friends. Um, so, you know, write a song, write a rap for your mom. I'm sure she's going to treasure it. Uh, number 11, on the list of top 15 ways to say thanks to your mom on Mother's Day. Uh, number 11 is shoes. Sometimes moms forget to splurge on themselves. Sometimes <clears throat> moms are so busy running around town that they forget to do any running around for themselves. So get them some shoes so that when they're running around town, they're at least comfortable and they're at least stylish. Um, everyone can use a new pair of shoes, especially moms. Um, and... You can take her old shoes, and you could try to fill them, but those are some big shoes to fill, especially from a mom. Uh, number 12, you can get your mom a cardigan because in every movie, every TV show I've ever seen, every, um, every single mom has a cardigan, uh, whether it's because her husband passed away, whether it's because her husband left, whatever, whatever it may be. Every single mom has a cardigan, and they do that thing where – they're like standing in the doorway or they're like standing on a beach or in the middle of a field and they take the two flaps of each cardigan and they like cross their arms, you know, and they, they're, they're like cold. There's a breeze, but they're introspective about it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So get your mom a cardigan. So, um, so that she can live out her, her mom stereotype as the movies have depicted them. <clears throat> Uh, number 14, get your mom a scrapbook because, um, if there's one thing I've learned from talking to my mom is that the time went by so quickly. She was busy the whole time. 
She was busy doing things the whole entire time. She was dropping me to practice. She was cooking. She was doing whatever she needed to do, and it went by fast. So get your mom a scrapbook. Let her, let her reminisce, um, and you can reminisce with her, and hopefully um, hopefully you get some, some, some cool stories, some cool experiences out of that because that could be something really cool. Um, take pictures from all, all throughout your life, through recently, through whatever you need to, um, and try and get some stories out of your mom because um, your mom was there for it all, you know. Uh, and finally, number 15 on the top 15 ways to say thank you to your mom on Mother's Day is just spend time with her, you know. That's, that's, that's all you really need to do, uh, regardless of how much you can spend on your mom. Regardless, I think all your mom really needs from you is some time, some extra time, uh, and make sure it's quality time. You know, you, you don't have to make her a documentary. You don't have to go climb a mountain for her, but... Um, the least you could do is spend some time with her uh, because because it is valuable. And um, you spending time w- with her um, today, Mother's Day, and every day is honestly what, what could make the difference for her. Um, so those are the top 15 ways to say thank you to your mom on Mother's Day. Well, guys, that's our show. Thanks for listening to the GSMC America's Still Beautiful podcast. We, we covered a lot today. Um, we talked about how um, the bond between a mother and their child can be emotional and uh, honestly inspiring in a lot of ways, in, in, in the ways that you can show appreciation for your mom. Uh, we talked about a son who made a documentary about his mom's bucket list journey. Uh, we talked about a mother and daughter who celebrated beating cancer by becoming the first American mother-daughter team to climb Mount Everest. Uh, then we also talked about how uh, there, there are influential mothers um, that are currently doing a lot of good in society. For example, Jill Biden and uh, Kamala Harris are actively flipping the script on how we view conventional families and healthy families um, by, by, by being stepmothers and by fully embracing that role. Um, we also talked about how Michelle Obama is partnering with Girl Scouts um, to, to um, be a role model for them and how, how she had a discussion with five individual Girl Scouts um, and kind of mentored them in be, being, their, being their own person and uh, basing it off of her book, Becoming. Uh, we also talked about how we had an orphaned polar bear who got a new chance in Russia thanks, thanks to some really helpful uh, um, wildlife workers. We also talked about how um, parole officers, um, once, once they underwent empathy training, 30 minutes of empathy training uh, led to a 13% drop-off in offenders returning to jail. Um, we also talked about how Nate Evans, a seventh grade literacy teacher, um, is building thousands of desks for his students in his community um, because he noticed that a lot of them don't have adequate workspaces. Um, and so he's working with donations and he's um, making all of these desks for free for the community. Um, and then finally, we talked about the top 15 ways to say thanks to your mother on Mother's Day. Um, we talked about the infamous five-pound weights. We talked about getting an extra pair of sunglasses for your mom. Uh, we said that you could write her a song kind of like I did a couple years ago for my mom. Uh, if The single mothers, we know that they love cardigans. Um, you know, and uh, we could also get, 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 get your mom coffee. That's another way to say thank you. Um, because her sorority days are behind her. Um, and coffee is one of the only acceptable ways um, to get going through the day. Um, so honestly, thank you so much for listening to the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Uh, I would like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review that really helps us. Uh, also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, that would be great. Thank you so much. 
You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows. From the GSMC Podcast Network, from social media news to marketing news, and even weird news the gsmc podcast network has you covered you can also follow us on twitter and facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the golden state media concepts america still beautiful podcast <laughs>